Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. Now that the meta has settled down and we see what the best performing cards are, I wanted to break down three strong decks of each archetype. Whether you're a new player or a seasoned veteran, these decks will be important for you to learn and understand. I already covered aggro and control, so here are the three best mid-range decks of this patch. As per usual, the deck codes will be in the description below along with the Mobilitics links. Before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and also consider visiting my Patreon for additional benefits. With that, I hope you enjoy these mid-range decks. Alright, starting off the same way as the last video, we're going to address the elephant in the room, and that is Aatrox Vane. This is one of the strongest decks we've ever seen in Legends or in Terra, boasting a win rate of 57.77% and a play rate of 6.37%. It is both the most played deck and the highest win rate deck currently. And honestly, it has the win rate for a good reason. It abuses the strong early and mid game Demacia cards that we've seen abused in the past, like Fleet Feather Tracker, Petrocyte Broadwing, who is a repeat offender and has been nerfed before, uh, while utilizing uh, weapons as well, which is a very strong new mechanic recently added to the game. So, of course, it is going to be a recipe for strength. So starting off the numbers, we have Catch, which is a plus one plus one, or we can equip something already in play with something from hand. Now this is really good because we cheat mana value if we hit like Aegis or Harp or Spear, you know, stuff like that, um, and then be able to get value off of it in some way. Really, really strong flexible card at burst speed. Next we have Fleet Feather Tracker, really strong early game challenger unit, controls the board. Uh, we definitely want challenger as much as possible because we want to be aggressive in the early and mid. We want to be able to beat over the opponent's units, whatever they're trying to develop, and stay ahead in combat. Elkin also does the same thing. First time I see an ally equip, grant me tough. One mana, two, two tough really insane. Uh, dark and Blood Letters is a weapon. We want to use multiple Dark and Weapons, cycle through them to get Aatrox tutored into our hand because that's his passive effect, and then play him on six and then use uh, Aatrox level to discount the Darkens, play them uh, from hand at a discount, sort of like we're playing Nautilus Deep. Same kind of concept, but the units are much stronger than Sea Monsters and a lot more flexible as well. Next, we have Blinding Assault, which is probably the strongest card in the entire deck. Uh, Valor, Challenger, and Scout. So if you just develop Valor in a good board state and you have protection for it with like the catch, you put uh, Darken Harp on it with quick attack and you challenger, you beat over two things during one combat, you might just win the game outright right there. You're going to put the opponent behind uh, infinitely as you snowball the game, keep developing, uh, keep pressuring, and then eventually ending the game through Aatrox. It's really, really hard to deal with. So yeah, Valor, super, super abusable card in this deck. Next we have Fish Fight. Normally, it's like single combat where an ally and an enemy strike each other, but if your ally is equipped, instead it strikes an enemy and then is unequipped. So this is like better single combat, however it's slow speed, so you have to keep that in mind. Really good to set up plays, set up attacks, or do it post combat, that way you can stay uh, ahead on the board. Next we have Petrocyte Broadwing, another abusable card like I mentioned, has been nerfed before, 203, formidable, attacks with its HP instead of its attack, so it can hit multiple times, it's a tanky little punk, you can buff it with weapons and that makes it even harder uh, to deal with, it hits harder, it trades up into more things, really really scary card. Next we have Darken Aegis, which is a 1-1 one, one boost plus tough, and also becomes Droral. When Aatrox is leveled, he discounts Darkens by 5, so you can play Droll for free as part of your top-end game-winning swings. Really, really scary there. Next we have the Darken Harp. This gives a unit quick attack, so if we catch this onto things, we can just win combat and be really, really annoying. Really strong card. Stodatu doesn't really come out too much later. Like, yeah, he's fine if we get the discount plan for 3. He's kind of just there. What we're mainly playing around here is the quick attack part of the weapon. That makes it extremely, extremely strong. Next we have the Darkened Spear, plus 2 HP. Grant the top 2 allies in your deck 1-1 one, one on attack. So of course this is best with Broadwing, right? Because we're going to boost Broadwing up to a 5 HP unit, and also buffing top allies if this hits champions like uh, Quinn, or like Vayne, or like Aatrox, or any other valuable challenger units. Oh my god, it gets out of control so fast here. And then, you know, Anaka can come out later. Just like Stadatu, it's like, okay, you should already be winning the game, so Anaka's just gonna be like a cherry on top. Next we have two of Zealous Ranger Knight, 2 mana 2-3, two, very good body. Uh, attack, give equipped allies plus 1 plus 1 this round, that also includes self, but basically you want to get like Broadwing or 
um, Valor out and then equip and then give them extra attack. They can keep trading up into stuff and he's just good like as a standalone unit. So good body, good effect. Definitely worth running at a two of. Next we have Triple Vein, of course, one of our champions. When I'm summoned or round start, create a tumble. Tumble allows you to equip an ally with an equipment from hand that costs two or less and then start a free attack. So it's like a rally effect for one unit and then also equip from hand. So it's like catch. So it's very, very efficient. Also, she discounts it um, every round start. So this thing can go down to like, you know, two mana, sometimes one, sometimes free. And that's really annoying. Um, extra veins become condemn, which is a strong strike spell. If you attack multiple times like tumble and then condemn good combo because then this will cost five less. So one mana strike spell. Very, very strong there. Um, Ranger Knight Defector. Once you've equipped an eye of this game, grant me scout. This thing is just absolutely insane as well. Put the Darken Harp on this and then it's hitting for six uh, twice because it has quick attack. Opponent can't block that. No way. Um, it's also just like a big unit. Really, really scary. Uh, one Quinn. The main reason we uh, run one Quinn and not triple Aatrox is because you don't need three Aatrox. That's super redundant. Because of how many weapons we run, we're basically guaranteed to tutor Aatrox into our hand. Because it says once you played or summoned three different other Darken, you know, draw Aatrox. Weapons count. So if you equip three times, boom, you get Aatrox in hand. So we only need to run them at two. That gives us an extra flex spot to run a champion. Quinn's very good. Not because of Quinn, but hey, because she summons a Valor. So, <laughs> yep, that's pretty much it. And you can put weapons on her too. And she's pretty strong on the scout attack, but having the extra Valor also goes a long way. Aside from this core list, you can also run other things like an additional copy of uh, Condemn if you want. You can run this at like a one or two of. It's really good. Just have the extra strike. You can adjust the weapon numbers here and there. There's actually a couple things you can do with the deck, but it's pretty solid as is. This is like one of the uh, most well-rounded versions of the list. It's kind of a tight deck space because we have to have the weapons. We have to have the challenger units. We have to have the champions. We have to have the catch, right? And then you get to like 36, 37 out of 40. And then uh, you only have a few flex spots to really spice it up. But yeah, definitely recommend trying it. Of course, it's the best deck of the format. It is probably going to get nerfed next patch. So keep that in mind if you're investing, especially as a new player. Be mindful that this deck will probably get significant nerfs in the near future. But for short term, it is a very good climbing deck. And that about wraps it up for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context while I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, for the example game we got Nami TF, which is actually a combo deck. Super popular a few patches ago. Uh, Nami got nerfed, haven't seen it too much since, but it should still be a pretty good contender. Uh, so let's go ahead and pitch one of our weapons and our defector we're attacking on odds so defector won't come out until attack five anyways so i want to see a slightly stronger early game hand especially something that synergizes with my current weapons so any of my challenger units would be fantastic oh there we go see we can float one play broadwing play vein on attack three this is much better for us here really strong curve let's go ahead and broadwing don't have to worry about too much here, I don't think. Ass, yep. Uh, go ahead and Vayne. Those who kill innocents are no more than Vayne. It gives us Challenger on the Broadwing. They can't just play Nami willy-nilly now. Start getting our Tumble developed. Cheaper every round start. Double Mystic. If I was on catch and I caught the Aegis onto my Vayne, wouldn't I just win automatically? Kind of crazy. Uh, let's go ahead. I've seen ally equipped to grant me tough. I want to play defector next turn pretty much immediately, right? Just take up my turn four. So let's go ahead and blood letters this. And see if they play something. They do not. Because we could have value traded into something. Like the 2-1-3. Okay, they didn't play it. Coral creatures or something like that, I think it's called. Fish fight. That's pretty good. I think I want a defector though. I definitely think that's right. I'm always up for a round. This fate blue. Yep. And then all we have to do is play um, two more weapons on turn five, and then we'll have Aatrox on six. Uh, ooh, I actually really like blinding assault here too. We could do Elkin blinding assault, and I just, and then. Mm, we won't have Aatrox right on 6 if we do that. We have to equip twice to get Aatrox on 6. Do I care, though? I'm not sure how much I care about that. 
we could also do Elkin. I like this better. Instead of Blinding Assault, let's do Elkin. And we'll do double weapons. I'm going to quick attack the Defector. Pick a card. All right. Sounds good. Uh, quick attack here. That gives this tough. Then we scout attack with our extra damage. And then we can also Aegis um, Broadwing or the, the Elkin. I'm down to just like split the weapons. Even if the tough is redundant, don't really care too much. But yeah, let's scout attack here. Put our pressure in. Boom. We could also strike, but we're going to threaten this guy. So yeah, let's Aegis now. That's going to get our Aatrox. We're threatening so much damage and also the TF kill. They will literally live with two. Yeah. This is very, very, very oppressive. Yeah, this is fine. Just Shelly. I mean, we have a strike spell. We could technically deal with it if we think we're going to die. Uh, two strike spells. It's just kind of over. We can always Aatrox on our next turn. And then I don't think our World Ender is going to be cheap enough to play, but I don't know. We striked a couple times. Draw some cards. Yep, yep. Nami would come out leveled because of the attune, right? Mm, 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 mm. There she is. People are counting on me. The Mirai will never know fear again. Yeah. About that. Grant other allies 1-1. One, one. Grant something 2-0. I kind of want to fish fight the Shelly right away. Not so much the Nami. Allies strike each other. And equipped ally strikes an enemy and then just equips. We'll target this. Put the heart back in the hand, I guess. No. Let's do this one. I think this is right. We're going to strike Shelly with the Elkin. Because Nami doesn't buff HP anymore. And then we can use second fish fight. To strike the Nami. Yeah, strike and then unequip, and then we strike the Nami as well. Let the tide carry you. That's fine. You can buff the attack of Shelly all you want. Here we go. Herbal fish. Um, yeah, let's strike now. An equipped ally strikes an enemy, then is unequipped. There you go. And then we can end with uh, re-equipping Joral, or we can play Blinding Assault. Doesn't really matter what we do. Iterative, that's fine. They actually got a really strong combo, too. But our strike spells just, again, control the board so well. If they have bench units, we can just say, nah, we're killing them. No problem, right? Go ahead and play this, too. And we're taking much less damage than we would have. If they actually got to develop Shelly and Nami, and I had no interaction. Uh, I think we could have tied this turn, actually. It'd be a lot of damage, you know? I think now we're chilling. We can even play the turn nice and slow until they FF. So let's scout attack. Then we'll play our Aatrox. Yep, yep. Deal with both of those. Rummage, yeah, just looking for like anything to hang on. So pretty. Hey, those are cool creatures I was talking about earlier. That's Aatrox now. Wow, six mana world ender. Seems good. But yeah, we're threatening lethal on the uh, attack in multiple ways because we're going to grab the coral. We can also Bloodletter the Alkin back. Flash of Brilliance, sure. It creates a 6 cost spell or higher. You only have 5 mana, so you can't even play it right away. Should just be FF here, probably. I'm going to Bloodletter the Alkin and then swing. Oh. Coral Cannon. Um, I'm still showing lethal. So, let's do it. No blood letters, because they're just going to play another Daring Poro. 
Yeah, there we go. Now the next deck I have for you is actually a classic, Gangplank Sejuani Plunder. With a win rate of 52.32% and a play rate of 1.29%, it's actually a very solid deck yet again. This deck comes in and out of the meta and has been dubbed Plunder by the community, basically because we're going to be proccing Plunder as much as possible and utilizing the Gangplank and Sejuani level ups. So let's talk about the numbers specifically. Well first, since this is actually a classic deck, I want to talk about what changed. Now what changed is a card called Spirits Unleashed. Yeah, Spirits Unleashed has been a topic of interest recently, ever since its rework. It gives plus one, plus one, and then deals one to everything, which is really important part of the, the ability here. So if we're dealing one to everything, we're hitting the opponent's nexus, that's plus one on the uh, plunder proc. And also our units are gonna come out plus one, plus one, which makes them even stronger, even better, even more valuable, because a lot of the units from plunder sacrifice stats for effects. So if we're getting effects plus stats, well, all of a sudden, we're kind of steamrolling in the mid game, right? That's basically the concept going on here. So we have triple warning shot to deal one damage to the enemy nexus. Good on attack turn if we're developing butcher because plunder grant me one one. Remember plunder is triggers the effect if you damage the, the nexus. So we have warning shot to do that plus butcher. We have parley to do that. We have shell shocker, which is a very strong unit with a tune. So we want to play one man two one on attack turn, uh, get our one mana back. We can swing. We can play uh, parley with that. Basically, just like getting our mana back is super high value because we want to use our mana and our units as much as possible. Next, we have Black Market Merchant. When you draw an enemy card, reduce its cost by one. Plunder. Nab one. So we're going to take a card from the uh, bottom of the opponent's deck, reduce its cost, play around uh, the opponent's cards, which can be fun sometimes, especially if you get like their big removal cards or if you get like a big win con. Really goofy um, game space Black Market Merchant creates. Next, we have Triple Make It Rain. Uh, help with removal. Also, it procs Plunder for us if it hits the Nexus. Mirai Ward into Swarm. Tusk Speaker, because it procs Plunder. Uh, Zap Sprayfin helps tutor one of our spells. It'll be Warning Shot, Parley, or Make It Rain. All really good. Uh, Piltoven Castaway, same deal with our Shell Shocker. The fact that he attunes is basically the main reason to run him. Also, you get a weapon, so really nice. You could, you know, sack the Castaway and then put Scout on like uh, Gangplank if you got Scout Weapon, which can create some really, really crazy mid-game pushes. There's also just a lot of good weapon value on the fact that he's attuning as well. It's just really nice. I have Nagakaburos for draw and consistency. Of course, also a body. Gangplank, Spirits Unleashed, which I already talked about, and Sejuani as our second champion. So yeah, it's actually super aggressive looking. Aggressive mid-range deck, super, super fun. Uh, highly recommend checking it out. Again, this is a classic. So if you are a returning player and you used to a vibe with plunder definitely give it another shot there's of course a couple spicy cards you include with this deck as well the most common one i've seen is actually one or two copies of feel the rush because you can just turn these champions into overwhelm win con if you get into like the late game it's really nice just holding your hand and then play it eventually if you float enough mana it's good against the slower matchups um and i've seen different numbers here and there of like the zap uh the parley and stuff like that so definitely play around with it but again this is a very strong core foundation to definitely get you into the deck and that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. All right, for the example game, we're fighting Ascended Sun Disk. Uh, Sharima shall try to ascend on this day, which is actually a little bit scary because historically Sharima's really good at dealing with mid-range decks, and that's us. Uh, let's see if we can beat them down, maybe play it a little bit more aggressively. We, we want to keep Make It Rain to proc Plunder, also really good for Rock Hopper. Um, I kind of like this hand in general. If we Shell Shocker on one, they don't really have a good out to it. We swing, we Mirai Warden on two, we can make it rain Butcher on attack three. So yeah, this is actually a keepable hand based on um, our attack turns and how much mana we have. So Shell Shocker. We also got our Spirits Unleashed. We can develop that maybe turn four. Sounds good, actually, yeah. So swing. That's a Plunder proc on one. We could honestly do Make It Rain Butcher on defense turn, right? Since we attuned. Isn't that kind of crazy if you think about it? Yeah, we want a Turbo Plunder. Oh, and we got the Rock Hopper anyways. I mean, this is just perfect then. Welcome to Shell Shocker being the best card in this deck, allowing us to do Make It Rain into Butcher. Here we go. And then we can probably play our Mirai Warden on attack three. Oh my goodness, GP. Oh, and we got an elusive. 
Unravel the earth, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and swing. I think if they play Xerath on four, it's actually gonna be kinda hard for us here. I want the top deck a plunder card, literally anything. No? Okay. Oof. We could Spirits Unleashed. I mean, we could do that. Ah, boom. This is like the most turbo we can get. Now we have a 6-5 GP. And, uh, got some in the barrel. The Roilings are gonna hit my GP. Barrel. Gonna take the Xerath, so it's the 2-1. Okay, this is fine. GP here. I rarely forget, never forget. Oh, really? Because it's vulnerable, Rolling Sands didn't activate. Oh, I'm learning so many neat interactions today. So I summoned GP, he got vulnerable. My powder keg does not get vulnerable times two, so it doesn't hit the Roiling. Oh, there goes my barrel now, though. That's fine. Yep. And if we were on warding shot, we'd be able to uh, burst speed level of GP and then get the attack call off. But since we can't do that, it's whatever. Let's just swing with the Daring Poro first. And also, swing with the GP. GP will level during the combat to get a little bit extra damage for us here. 4, 3, 3, 1 are both pretty meh to swing with, honestly. Uh, we can just leave them up. There we go. I love that I got a elusive unit from the Mirai Warden. That's super annoying for them. Your king has returned. Bonk. There we go. Mm. All right. Yeah, I just want to stay wide on the board here, so that I pretty much guarantee win on open next turn. We have the warning shot as well. That's pretty nice. Sejuani. Uh, we can frostbite 4-4, four, four. that's fine. Only the strong survive. Bow to no one. We have AoE Frostbite, and uh, we have Gangplank, open attack with barrel, extra damage. Lots of good stuff. Lots and lots of good stuff here. They probably want to grab powder keg, then we warning shot, AoE frostbite, win on next open, because we're gonna be wide. Is Zir not even leveled yet? Alright. He will be on the attack call. Yep. Yep. This is just one of the most high roll plunder games I've ever seen. Perfect hand. Yep. Warning shot. I'll take my time. And we can also put this here. Leave no survivors. Stand down. Yep. Explosive. Barrel. Pull open. It doesn't really matter what order, but let's do the overwhelm. The like this. Riches. Yeah. We want to hit with Sejuani first because she has overwhelm. That damages Nexus, and then we'll AoE Frostbite again. In case they're on ride negation for the explosion, right? So that's usually a good habit. Attack with the Sejuani first, if she's already leveled. You dare. Yeah, because they can negate this, and then I'd lose Frostbite value. But this is really good. Quick sand, turn off the Overwhelm. Yeah, I guess we should have done Overwhelm and then Elusive, right? That'd be even better habit. Okay, it didn't matter, though. They're not on the ride negation. They'll get the Frostbite anyways. And the final deck I have for you is Pike Rek'Sai Lurk, with a win rate of 50.02% and a play rate of 1.86%. It's a solid climbing deck choice. Blood Bait is really good because we get to manipulate our Snap Jaw Swarm and attack on our defense turns, which is really, really good. That way we can double up on the Lurk proccing. Next, we have two Forsaken Bakai. We have to be very careful not to run too many non-Lurk cards, so we're actually only running four in this list. 
two Bakai and two Chrononancer. The main reason to run them is because they are predict cards, which help us see our champions like Pike and Rek'Sai, so we can get extra lurk value, or we can just manipulate our attack turns and maybe even manipulate our next defense turn if we hit uh, Snapdoss Swarm, and a lot of different uh, variables come up with Predict, so super good card, especially on like attack one or uh, follow up in the mid game, we can use this again to find our pike, which is super, super good at basically snowballing a lot of games out of control. Next we have Triple Sharkling and Triple Hatchling, both very good uh, one drop lurk units. We want to hard open them as much as possible and start ramping our lurk. Next we have two Aspiring Chronomancer, same reason as the Bakai, very strong predict card. Predict is a fantastic um, ability for us to have. Next we have Triple Call the Pack. To play, put a card from hand on top of your deck, create two random lurkers. So this is if you have multiple champions in hand or you just have a champion in hand you wanna put it on top. You can burst speed, put it on top and then attack or you can actually just use this to get more resources in case you're running out. If you open all of your aggressive units, you're like one, two, and three, and then you're out of steam, well, Call the Pack can also help fuel back up, which is really, really good. Next, we have Redfin Hammer Snout. Grant an enemy vulnerable. Vulnerable's nice, that way we can target enemy champions, enemy units that we want to take out. So, help us win some trades that way. Snapjaw Swarm lets us attack on our defense turn, so we can continue to get Lurk. Next we have a Rek'Sai. When I Lurker attack, Grant Lurker allies everywhere plus one. So basically when she attacks or if she's on top of deck, uh, she gets an extra plus one to the already plus one Lurk ramping effect. So super good. Uh, when you attack with 10 plus power, she gets Overwhelm. She's super big and also gives you three more Lurkers in your hand. That way, again, if you're running out of fuel, you just get more. Next we have Xersai Collar Predict. So super good. It's a Lurker. Pike, our other champion, when he's lurked, so he's on top of deck and then we hit lurk, he becomes Pike's spell, which is death from below. Summon Pike striking an enemy. Super hard to deal with. They have to be on like deny or right in negation to stop this. Otherwise, he's really, really annoying, can come out and just kill something. Very high priority to keep this and use this when the time is right. And then you start leveling him and he gets absolutely crazy. If you see level Pike, you probably won the game. So you love to see that. Next we have two Blood in the Water, which is a Lurk Rally. It's a, it's a Lurk spell too, so that's really cool. Doesn't hurt the consistency of the deck to run it, and is also a Rally card. Helps us close out the games later on with big Overwhelm units, such as Xersareth, who when he attacks, if he has 8 plus power, he has Fearsome, Overwhelm, Spell Shield. Basically becomes like Nasus, but with Overwhelm. So he's, he's pretty scary if you ramp up Lurk over the course of the game and get this guy down. Um, Xerside Dune Breaker has Overwhelm as well, so really good, get a bunch of attack. And then Jawfish, use this to clean up the board, play this right on 8 to basically force the opponent to surrender in a lot of game states. Each Lurker ally strikes a random enemy. Our Lurkers do not take damage back, they just do the striking. So the, the bad part is it's random. Each one you can like have 7 uh, freaking Lurks all hit the same unit even though the 6 board space. It's just that ridiculous sometimes. And that kind of sucks, but it's still a really good top end card. Big unit, big strike spell, pretty nice. This deck can be run many, many different ways. I've seen a lot of non-lurk cards uh, put in, but again, you have to remember, every non-lurk card hurts the consistency of the deck, so be very mindful. But some cards to consider are Rite of Negation, which is a super defensive utility card I've seen some people run. I don't think it's super necessary, because if you're in the position to Rite of Negation, you probably lost, so not super good. Uh, I have seen some Ruthless Predator. Very common one. That way you can amp up the Rek'Sai and cheat some of the attack, get her leveled even faster. This one's pretty good. I actually think Ruthless Predator has a uh, spot in the deck. There are definitely some other things as well that I've seen here and there, but I wanted to make this version as consistent as possible so it's not super triggering when you whiff Lurk. Um, it's made very intentionally, so I highly recommend trying it out, seeing if you like the Lurkers. Now here's a example game so you can see how it plays out. Hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play it. Alright, for the example game, we're probably fighting Acolytes if I had to guess. Uh, we want to attack on odds, so that's nice. That's already a 50-50. We win the coin flip by attacking on odds. We want to pitch this. We can keep the hammer snout, keep the Bakai, keep the swarm. We want to make sure we have our early game units. We want uh, a one drop to attack on turn one. Always really nice. This is actually just a, a really good hand. So, Bakai. We can hit um, Xerath on 5 is fine, or we can do a Blood Bait so we have something to play on attack, uh, or defense 4, yeah. Blood Bait. There we go. Swing at the Bakai. Bonk. Then we'll play Snapdoss 1 on defense turn. 
Hopefully not miss Lurk. There's only three non-Lurkers in the deck, so it'd be three out of 34 chance. Here we go. Good hit. Bonk. All right. Then what we want to do, instead of uh, Collar, since I want to keep turboing our Lurk, what I want to do is Bloodbait and Sharkling. And then we'll swing. about that's fine uh we don't need to attack with the bakai because he would get traded into for free so let's just swing with these just keep control of the board right swing with it they push extra damage now we'll use him as a blocker there you go both of these threaten the devout yep and it's our defense turn and we have a snap draw swarm in our hand guess what we're gonna do yep, we're going to attack again Relic Fairy, there's the Acolyte. But we can Snap Jaw Swarm, and then we can Hammer Snap the Acolyte, and it's pretty much GG. Our hand was just way too good. Even without Pike Spell. Go ahead and Snap that. I'm down to just Rek'Sai. Even if she doesn't level, I think we're attacking with enough on the board where we just win by being wide. And there you have it. That last game was very, very, very explosive. That's one of the rare hands where it kind of just plays itself. You do turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four, and then once you get into like attack five or six, you're so far ahead. Usually the games aren't that fast with Lurk. I just got really lucky. But yeah, you can manipulate your hand with all the predict stuff, and I think that's super interesting. Uh, there's a lot of different variations of play you can do with Lurk, so definitely highly recommend trying it, along with the other two decks that I showcased in this video. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!